Hey guys, it's Jonathan here from Rivers and Robots and Set Sail, and today I'm going to be answering some of your questions on songwriting. So a bunch of you sent in questions from Twitter and Instagram all about songwriting, and I'm going to attempt to answer as many of those as I can in this video. So AmyRK23 on Instagram asked, what other songwriters have inspired you? Uh, Sufjan Stevens for like arrangements and melodies, uh, also Justin Vernon for arrangements, Robin Pecknold writes some of my favourite melodies ever, Paul Simon, uh, Brian Wilson, those guys just have such an amazing discography. Also in the worship kind of world, uh, guys like Matt Redman, Martin Smith, uh, Brian Dirksen, Kevin Prosh. So yeah, there's there's a few. A whole bunch of people ask the question of which comes first, lyrics or music. For me it's usually music first. I see myself as more of a producer guy, so when I sit down to write a song, I often start with the rhythm and the chord progression and produce the whole musical side of the song and then start from there. With Rivers and Robots songs like Fall Down, that was a whole instrumental track and then right at the end of that process I wrote the melody and the words for that song. However the exception to that is when a song comes out of a spontaneous worship moment. So sometimes we'll just be in a worship time. I often lead worship at Manchester House of Prayer where we're singing through scripture and singing through the Psalms and very often spontaneous choruses come around through that and you know that's lyrics, that's music, that's melody all at the same time. So. Um, very often those spontaneous moments are where some of the best choruses come out and I record those on my phone and take those home and then develop them later on into fully fledged songs. Also a note on melody and lyrics, I think those two should kind of influence each other quite a lot. So I'm going to be writing lyrics that fit the melody but I'll also change the melody if it suits the lyrics better. Um, the way that you get great lyrics that fit with the melody is when you've adjusted both to fit with each other, if that makes any sense. Talino Sonali on Instagram asked, uh, how are your moments with God that inspire you to write the songs? Is there any special moment that marked you and a song that emerged from it? Most of my favourite songs are songs that have come out of moments with God. For me, my favourite Rivers and Robots album is probably still Take Everything, because that whole album came out of an encounter with God. The later albums were probably much better musically, but there's just something special about that album for me. In 2011, I went to the One Thing conference in Kansas City, and it completely blew my mind. Now, I'd been to a lot of conferences, right, but this was something else. Me and my dad flew over from the UK to be there, and there were three sessions a day of hours of worship, amazing teaching and then even between those sessions you've got the 24 hour prayer room where you can go in and there's worship and there's intercession going on all the time and we just went to everything. I guess we'd flown over there and we just wanted to get everything out of it while we were there. The theme of the conference that year was Jesus, our magnificent obsession. You know, we often think of obsession as a bad thing and it can be when you're obsessed with the wrong things, but to be obsessed with Jesus, I think is a really good thing. And it was over those few days that I realized my own view of Jesus was way too small. I had such a limited understanding of who he was and how amazing he is. And being in all these worship times and hearing this teaching and hearing these songs, really opened my mind to how amazing Jesus is and the fact that he is completely endless. Like, like I could spend my whole life trying to discover who Jesus is and still never fully figure him out. He's just endless and amazing and whatever I have in my head of how amazing Jesus is, he's more than that. When I came back from that conference, I was like a different person. I felt so on fire for God that I didn't want to do anything else. I was actually at a point where anything that wasn't spending time with God felt like a complete waste of time to me. I remember being picked up from the airport and the radio was on in the car and the guys on the radio were talking about football and who was at the top of the charts this week and I just remember thinking, what is the point of any of that? Like, what's the point of football? What's the point of the charts? Like, I just want to spend time with Jesus. And I guess I experienced for a few months that real thing of like, obsession with who Jesus was and uh, it was amazing. And that's the place I was in when I wrote the album Take Everything. You know, each song I can trace back to a moment with God and a time when a bit of scripture just came alive or he revealed something in prayer or in worship that I'd just never seen and never understood before and it blew my mind all over again. So every time I listen to that album it takes me back to that place and reminds me of those times and that's why I love it so much. Zoe asked, please could you give those of us who are fairly new to worship songwriting some advice slash tips that really helped you when you first started. Uh, the first thing I would say is just be yourself. Um, it sounds really cliche, I'm sure everyone says that, but it is really true, like don't, so many artists start off trying to write a song like another artist. And I used to get really frustrated because I would hear songs and think, oh, I wanna write a song like that. And then I would try and write a song like that and it'd be rubbish in comparison. <laughs> I had to learn to write my own kind of song and the style that came naturally to me. And also if you're writing worship songs, um, just learn to love Jesus and enjoy spending time with him. And when you're in that place of reading the word and being in prayer and those things are just coming alive to you and like burning inside you, 
like worship songs just naturally flow out of that place because worship is a response to beholding Jesus and beholding who God is and when we see more of him and we love him worship is just our response from that place uh, V Chaps on Instagram asked how did you start writing songs and how do you learn to make lyrics flow correctly this is something I've only started learning recently and I listen back to some of my older songs and the lyrics don't necessarily flow that well. I think the key is fitting the words into a melody in a way that feels natural. So say the lyric as a sentence, as you would speak it, and listen to how it flows, listen to where the syllables fall, where the emphasis is, and try and work that with the melody in a way that the words don't fall awkwardly or there's emphasis in a strange place on the word that there wouldn't normally be. In fact, let me give you an example. Um, so there's a line in the song, Open Up Your Doors, that I always find a bit awkward. It goes, Oh, what If you were to say the sentence with that emphasis, it would sound really weird. You would never say, oh, what brill the enjoy, <laughs> what free demand release. It just sounds really weird, right? It's, there's just gaps in places where there shouldn't be gaps. Um, and then more recent songs that I've written, like Friend off the Winter EP, I'm much happier with the flow of those lyrics because it feels natural and it feels, they're kind of sung in the way that you would probably say the sentence as well, like, um, and I know, I know, That just feels more natural to me. It feels like the words fall in the right place, the melody has the right kind of emphasis in the right kind of place. So it's a bit of trial and error as a really practical way. Try counting the syllables of your melody and just making sure that the words you're fitting in there match the syllables or, you know, fall in the right places. It's hard to explain, but you kind of know it when you hear it. Andrea said, I told my friends that you're making this video and they told me to ask about Rivers and Robots process of writing lyrics. For example, do you guys worship and get lyrics from just personal prayer or do you guys read scripture? And from there, how do you change the words to make your songs? So some of our songs are spontaneous songs that come out of worship times. Uh, mostly the lyrics come from reading the Bible. You know you get those times when you're reading through a passage of scripture and a verse jumps out to you. I see that as an invitation to jump into that verse. And like even as you're reading through the passage and the verse jumps out, stop what you're doing, reread the verse, like go over it over and over, pray the verse, pray it back to God like... Um, turn the verse that you're reading into a prayer, like into a dialogue and into a conversation with God. Write it down, sing it, pray it, look up other verses around the same topic and um, just kind of wait and meditate on that one verse that jumps out to you and, and just spend some time in that verse and spend some time on that theme. And I usually find that as I'm doing that, there's a real like light bulb moment of revelation where it could be a verse I've read so many times, but all of a sudden just by waiting and spending extra time on it and praying through it, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I get it now. And, and you see something in that verse that you've never seen before. And those kind of moments often lead to great songs. Fitting a verse into a melody can sometimes be quite tricky. And sometimes I'll change the odd word here or there to make it rhyme or make the flow feel a bit better. Um, as long as you're not changing the meaning, I think it it's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's like having different versions of the Bible, right? I mean, you read one verse in three different versions and they all basically mean the same thing, but they say it in different ways or they phrase it slightly differently. And Sometimes you just need to phrase a verse slightly differently in order to make it flow better. But every now and then I'll get a verse that fits straight into a melody and that's like my favourite thing. So like one of my favourite songs for fitting scripture into a melody is Fullness of God from the Eternal Son album. Uh, it's taken from Colossians 1 in the ESV version, verse 15. Uh, it starts with, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Uh, verse 17, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Um, 19, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things. Um, and so fitting that into the melody, just rejiggling the order of some of the verses actually worked. So like, so uh, the second verse of the song starts with verse 15 from Colossians 1. 
is the image of the invisible God. And then verse 16. He made all things on earth and heaven above. Again, adding above rather than just heaven made it rhyme with the verse, the, the line before. Um, the firstborn over all creation. That's back to the verse 15. The ruler over all the nations. It's the end of verse 16. And then it goes to verse 19. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. basically verse 19 and 20 pretty much word for word um so i love it when that happens i love it when i can fit the actual verse in as it's read in the bible into a melody it's just my favorite thing so guys thank you for your questions i hope those answers were helpful if you enjoyed this video then make sure you subscribe to the channel uh maybe give it a like or even share it with your friends so that they can watch some of these videos too and we will see you next time with another video thank you for watching Set sail, video blog. Set sail, video blog. It's a video, it's a blog as well. Set